everybody, it's Chan Chai, and uh, today I've got a really, really special unboxing, but again, uh, end of summer, post-Evo, this has just been uh, an endless supply of wonderful, wonderful arcade parts. So anyhow, today it's something truly special. We're going to get to exactly what that is, but before that, I want to give a shout out to Philanthropist. Uh, Philanthropist is a community member who has been very helpful to me and uh, giving me some guidance on some things. And uh, for today, I'm giving them a shout out to, or them, a shout out to uh, the fact that they suggested that when I do my unboxings or videos on the glass uh, table, that I should definitely use a play mat or a desk mat even. Uh, today, I'm using two play mats uh, from my favorite game, Yomi, uh, my favorite card game. And it is basically kind of like Virtua Fighter meets Street Fighter as a card game, and it's wonderful. Uh, highly recommended. Uh, maybe sometime I'll do videos on it because it's an awesome game. There's a lot of uh, a lot of good card stuff going on in there, a lot of good fighting game stuff going on. But anyhow, um, you'll probably recognize the characters from Fantasy Strike if you've played that game. It is the same universe, all uh, from the imagination of David Serlin. Um, I know Serlin. I've uh, interacted with Serlin uh, a few times and online quite a bit. And uh, they are, um, I have a lot of respect for them as a game designer, especially for their boards and card games. Um, absolutely love uh, the games from Serlin Games. So I'll give a shout out to them today. Um, but Yomi is one of my favorite card games to play. And uh, Puzzle Strike, which is based on Puzzle Fighter, is like definitely my favorite uh, deck building game. It is... Uh, it is insanely competitive, which is similar to Sterling himself, uh, kind of shamelessly competitive. And it's something that's a little different in the boards and card space um, because it's not simply create an engine and go. It's really, you need to be paying attention to what your opponent is doing and countering what they do while you execute your plan and try to get them to basically crumble under that pressure. So uh, Puzzle Strike, amazing game. The sequel is just coming out, and uh, that should be arriving for me soon. And then Yomi, amazing card game. All right, so let's get back to arcade parts. Um, today we've got something really special. Um, it's uh, one of my favorite, favorite arcade levers by far so far, That out of the ones that I've used. Again, I'm pretty new to the hobby. Um, in terms of expanding my options, going beyond the Sanwa JLF, going beyond retail sticks, I only got into arcade parts, like trying all kinds of all kinds of parts and getting, like falling in love with this side of the hobby. Uh, less than a year ago, it's only been about uh, pretty much nine months, and in that time, uh, the Sanjux V3 has become one of my very very favorite levers. Um, and it's definitely one of my favorite levers to play Virtual Fighter on. Um, it's a lever that is loved by a lot of people that like Japanese style levers, and it's even liked by people that don't like Japanese style levers, but it's like their Japanese style lever of choice. Um, it's often combined, it's often been compared to being both like Sanwa and like Simitsu. And here is the Sanjux V3 from a recent video, which is the um, the Killer Bee is what I like to call it because it's the black and gold, which is very similar to the Wu-Tang Clan. Um, and it was, you know, through a group buy that was coordinated from Buttercade. And this one it came out fantastic. Um, everything, the build, there's like no real marks or anything on it. It just came out wonderful. This particular lever is playing super smooth. And this is the um, ball top it came with. So... Um, that was rec in a recent video. So this is the classic Sanjux V3. So why am I bringing it up on a new video for a new unboxing, fresh out of the box? And that's because we got something very special that has just, uh, none of us had really heard about it until less than a month ago. And I'm just really grateful that I was able to, to obtain one. And at the end of the year or start of 2024 or 2023 i'm sorry start of next year there should be uh a few more they should be more available there'll be a group by in other ways so that's what this box is um let's see what exactly we're in for 
right? So, we have, this is a nice, well, this is a nice treat. So, as a hint, we've got our classic black um, V3 uh, restrictor gates. We've got the classic octagon. We've got the squirt ball, which is, and this, uh, we got, actually, this is probably the square. And we got circle. And I believe Squirkle is probably on our device today. And this nice bonus, this is the Buttercade Spring Delete. If you have an Auto V2, which is uh, auto DIY mod compatible with the Sanwa JLF, compatible with the Hayabusa lever, um, and apparently it works on this too. <laughs> Maybe I'll try it, we'll see. But it's mainly for the, the Sanjux, uh, I'm sorry, it's mainly for the JLF and for the Hayabusa. And on the Auto V2, that um, changes the pivot and spring model into a uh, grommet based model. That's very similar to a crane lever, but it, it plays in its own unique way. It's a really cool mod and it has really cool properties in the play. So um, shout outs to Buttercade for providing these for free to us. Because uh, a lot of people do like to get these for that particular mod, the Auto DIY V2. So that's a nice teaser image we have. And so we've got that. Um, let's look at this lever that we got. Okay. Let's see what is so special about this. Why are we making a big deal about this? This is I've I featured the V3 a couple times already, right? Um, and all of them are special, and all, and especially through the Buttercade group, you get colors that you just that are not very common because the normal col color is the blue that Sanjux loves. What do we got here? Well, by default, this is already a great deal because they're giving us the Sanjux um, or Bandit, who's the creator of Sanjux, um, Bandit's Nobi Bat Bullet Top. This is his take on the Sebetsu, uh Nobi Bullet, and it's really, I've had good reviews. I haven't tested it out enough yet. Um, I can tell on this shaft that it is a shaft where you can use a wrench to change the top instantly. All right, this is what we're now calling the Sanjux V3. Um, we call it the Sanjux V3 Premium Edition. What's different about it? This blue that you see is aluminum. This is an almost all aluminum build. Um, again, we have our killer bees here, which is Delrin, is the black. And now we've got aluminum. Should be more stable. There's more to it than that, but um, this is the same plate on the bottom, the gold plate that we have on the killer bees version. It's a special for the butter kid. Um, but you can mix and match with other Sanjux V3. That is the same. The restrictor gate is the same, or the same set, and this is a squircle. It's uh, much more rounded, so, and it's uh, wider out, so. Let's take a look here. This is looking very similar so far, and the bolts are about the same. Okay. So this looks similar. Why is everybody making a big deal about the premium? Well, um, what I can tell you is that, not sure if I wanna risk opening it up. It's tempting, it's very, very tempting. So maybe we'll do that. But what goes on is, well, first off, it's instantly upgraded with a shaft that I've been using for the V6 and now is on the V3. This is a screw-in bolt. Um, you use your screwdriver and make sure you have the right fit so you don't strip your screws. And this bolt you remove and that's how you do it. It's not an E-clip. It is an E-clipless shaft. I, on the V6, it's a must. And I'm assuming now on the V3, it's a must because the E-clipless shaft saves you a lot of pain, uh, op you know, disassembling, taking the shaft out. Um, but it also just, it, it performs very well. And so, so far, and now we finally have it on the V3, which is something a lot of people have really been wanting. All right, taking out the top there. Let's take the 
this out here. Okay. So, this is using, let me make sure I've got the right screwdriver because I don't want to strip these. I really do not want to. Stripping screws and bolts is like the worst thing in this hobby. You never want to do that. So this is feeling pretty solid. My hands suck, so it's hard for me to test right out, out right. No, it's too much wiggle there. Okay. So what was this? Okay. Good thing with what we're doing right now is we're just taking the mounting plate off. We're not disassembling the whole thing. Um, obviously, this is very much like a JLF where you would have these four uh, bolts, but these are bigger screws. These are kind of like more standard. Um, I am new to mechanical hobby, so I have to admit, I'm not gonna be able to tell you the screw size uh, right off the bat on things. Eventually I will. Down here though, it has these others. Uh, you secure the plate with these. And these plates hold the switches in a very nice stable array. And you can't really mess up where you put the switches. The switches are great. And you can see they got like a half leaf lever inside. Like they kind of stop right after the switch. So and that's the same as the V3. So right now everything looks very much like the standard V3, except that we can tell that it's aluminum, which that alone is awesome. Um, this premium all aluminum builds awesome. And I think, uh, you know, this lever has always been a premium price lever, but it's a boutique product. It's one man making these. He, he orders for certain parts to be made, but he assembles them himself and they are his design. Um, and then he has to manage the tolerances. <clears throat> all right, so I've got that going. Let's see what's so special. This is what's kind of special about the new build. In the old um, V3, it was an all Delrin body, and this was a whole unit. Now, this is what we call the pivot cup. The pivot's that little thing in the middle, and it's greased up between the pivot and the pivot cup. The pivot cup is now a separate unit that can be um, taken out and replace with another type of pivot cup and another type of pivot. So now this has become more modular, but also this is just overall a very sta uh, stable build. And like, let's say in the Delrin, if there was any manufacturing issues in the Delrin, you have to replace the whole part. Now, um, these pivot cups can be, you know, manufactured a little bit on more cost effectively because they're smaller area, they're not the whole square. And with that, um, it is possible for Bandit or other um, creators to create really um, interesting takes, uh, alternatives for the standard um, pivot cup. And I think this is a wonderful feature. I think this is gonna be awesome for Japanese lovers. This is adding another level of while being more stable and the build much more appreciable, it does say V3 here, um, we now have the ability to have different uh, pivots and pivot cups. And that matters a lot because that affects, that greatly affects the feel of the lever. And so this is just, um, it's just a wonderful feature. It's, it's a flat out new feature. So, um, Thank you, uh, Bandit, for your for not only having such a refined lever that you've built that we all that most of us love, um, but also just you know also adding to the innovation pool, adding more and more new features to it. The the V three already has this wonderful tray of. Am I doing this upside down? Because I think it's not sunk in there. I need to make sure it's sunk in. But um, I'm really, you know, this lever just plays wonderfully. It has this, um, yeah, I did upside down. Um, it has this wonderful tension drop. And 
now what I'm appreciating, I've been having this summer of Seimetsu, and I really am loving the Seimetsu levers, but I'm also having to learn how to play them better because um, there are things about them that are great features, but it's just slightly different from a JLF. And uh, a community member, uh, D- Deep Throat, um, has like helped me understand why exactly, um, why it feels different and what it is that maybe I should consider as I adjust to using a Sumitsu lever and it does make it better. Like the levers are really good. It's, my concerns were not complaints. They were just curiosities about the difference in feel compared to a Sanwa JLF. But, um, and what I can say with that experience now, and I'm still experiencing more and more, uh, same with levers and I have more to go through to kind of really understand them is that the Sanjux V3 has a feel, like others have said, including Alex Nostalgix in his wonderful uh, Sanjux Roundup video, where he said that it's kind of like um, Sanwa and Seimitsu. Uh, it's kind of like it, it's kind of like they both put together and made a product, <laughs> you know? Um, the Sanjux V3 still has a kind of almost airy. It's like I've described this mechanical machined feel to it, where... Um, where it feels, uh, where where it has that tension drop, but it feels like a machine. You know, I feel like I'm driving a sports car or at least a finely tuned BMW. You know, um, where the Sanwa might feel like a, an awesome uh, Toyota that I really love driving. You know, um, but there's kind of this floatiness to it that I that I do like. And I and J, and Samuel J off is still one of still a lever, a lever that I really like a lot that I love, and you know with the Senjo ball top it's that's one of my favorite combos, with the Auto DIY V five it's also one of my favorite combos, and now I'm loving Seimitsu levers, but the Sanjux V three has always had that machine feel that tension drop, that feeling like you're being sucked into your inputs, and. St- you know, and this feels actually, I'm starting to wonder if this is smoother than even this, which was already very smooth. Um, and I've heard people men- say that they, they, f- they really love in the feel of this. Um, and that's people playing it today. Um, so, you know, um, it's only a few of us that got this, but it is great. Aside from the mounting plate just maybe cutting me here, so. The only problem with, I have was the mounting plate, right? This little thing here. Um, but I've, you know, I'll deal with that. Um, it just kind of poked me. Uh, so I'll, I'll address that, maybe tape it up or something or cut a little. Um, but this itself feels really, really good. Um, the feel of the Sanjux V3, sorry I'm babbling. It's, I'm trying to be a little quiet so my wife doesn't get ticked off. <laughs> um, but. It still has kind of the floatiness, still a little bit of it from the JLF, you know. Um, whereas the Seimitsu, so far the levers I've used in Seimitsu are very, very clicky, which I, which is awesome. I think there are people that just that's like going to be their bag. It's very, you know, um, you feel your inputs, you feel where you're at, and on the Seimitsus, they they design the gates, it looks like, it seems like they designed the gates very specific to the levers themselves. And that's why when you look for parts for Seimitsu levers, you're finding the alternative parts from Seimitsu are like for the particular lever, including the gates. It's not like a universal gate that works on every model. It just works on certain ones. Then you get a different gate to work on another model. And that's because they have a strong attention to detail and their team wants to make things for that lever like the the lever itself is the concept right and um and that's kind of true in a lot of mechanical things you know Sanwa probably too just that uh the amount that I see of it in Seimitsu is like a ton (laughs) you know so um especially when talking to enthusiasts who are fans of Seimitsu but it could just be the enthusiasm side appreciating the finer details but um but I'm enjoying them too so Again, this is the amazing Sanjux V3, and this happens to be the Killer B version.
This is the Sonjic V3 Premium that we're calling. All aluminum, Delrin, and aluminum. All aluminum, a shaft that uses no E-clip. Instead, you just screw or unscrew it and then assemble. It also has um, a wrenchable shaft, so you can use a uh, so you can unscrew it by basically putting in the appropriate size shaft and unscrewing the ball top or the nobi top, as it were. Um, the shaft does still spin because it's very much a Japanese lever, and I do like that a lot. But I am starting using the nobis. I am starting to appreciate J levers that are not having shaft spin. But this one still has shaft spin, but it's not, you know, crazy slick, but it's there. Um, real smooth, everything. And again, you can use a wrench to undo the ball top. But most importantly, we now have a super stable aluminum body with a modular uh, pivot cup. And that opens up a lot of options for both uh, Bandit himself um, with the Sundux brand that they can they can create different pivot cups or replacements or maybe even different feels or different actions but it also opens that up to the community certain members of the community can create those too so what a wonderful time we are um, arcade levers are still wonderfully innovating and fun and wonder and just fantastic so I'm happy to be in this hobby. I'm happy to have um, a community that shares knowledge with each, with each other um, and just uh, shares the love, you know? And they love levers. They also love buttons. And, um, and it's, just, it's just such a great time in a way. Um, and we're now entering this new phase of, uh, for fighting gamers, for retro gamers, puzzle gamers and um you know all types of gamers so i just hope more people can appreciate these things because uh they're pure joy and they're fun to they're also fun to tinker with they're fun to learn how they work and then it's fun building you know improving your technique and d even devoting yourself to certain ones um but i am of the type that's just very curious and so i'm going to keep trying all kinds of different stuff um, there's a lot more unboxing to come, but, uh, I hope this one, you guys can appreciate this. Uh, I'm just super excited for this lever. I'm going to be playing it as soon as I can this week. I've got so much work ahead of me, but after all that work, I'm going to definitely be putting in a lot of hours into this lever right away. Um, because I really can't wait to, to try it out and see how it compares to the, to the older V3s. Um, I still love the V3s and we can still mix and match these plates. It's awesome. And, uh, yeah, um, I couldn't really be happier. So thank you all. Please, uh, keep on enjoying, uh, this hobby and keep supporting each other and keep trying new stuff sometimes, you know, you'll surprise yourself at how much you love and it might even be a better, better play for you. All right, you guys have a good one. Take care and thank you very much. Okay, so this is the epilogue. Um, I figured a lot of people would like to see the inside of the V3, the classic V3 as well, just so that they can see the comparison. So again, this is our new premium V3 and you can see the, the Delrin is much smaller in this because it's that small square in the middle. That again is the pivot cup with the pivot in the inside there, shaft. Now that white stuff is the grease. Um, you definitely want grease, especially when you want plastic on plastic. So um, generally you want grease. Anyhow, this is the classic V3, or at least the, um, the more recent V3s before the premium. And this whole body here, this whole big square is the Delrin, right? Little Delrin square whole body is Delrin. Uh, Delrin is an amazing plastic um, with, uh, it's just really nice, comes out really nice and also has a um, very good uh, 
low friction properties, which is what makes it so good for the pivot mount. And now we've just limited the Delrin to this small square. What that also means, I'm guessing, I'm not an expert in manufacturing, I'm not an expert in, um, in processing materials or making plastic products, but I assume that this small square means that you have a, a larger sheet, you got a sheet of many squares. And this one, you're only getting like a sheet of a fewer squares. And so because of that, you can do a little bit more quality control, so to speak, um, because you have a lot more units per sheet. And so he's making more pivot mounds and pivot cups. Um, yeah, sorry, pivot cups. He's making more pivot cups. And because of that, he can also pick out which ones are which and also uh, kind of grade them. Uh, you know, so he just has more to work with and that would be more cost effective. But on top of that, we now have this modular design that because it's cheaper to modify it, um, it's cheaper for someone to kind of make alternative ones. So again, this is the premium V3 and this is the naked uh, regular V3, which again, amazing lever. They both are fantastic. Um, but now we have some new features there. And again, the shaft, um, you can see again here, this is where a wrench of the right size could go through and hold the shaft in place while you remove the ball top. Whereas here, it's like a normal Japanese lever that does not have such a feature. Some Korean levers do have that feature, having uh, being able to use a wrench here to tighten or loosen the ball top. This one, no such uh, no such notches there. And again, this is our classic um, E-clip. You can see that E-clip is that ring that goes around that bolt, and that bolt is for a flathead screwdriver. The reason for that flathead screwdriver bolt, really, it's just the bottom of the, it's the shaft itself, it's not a bolt. And you put a flathead screwdriver there so that you can rotate the ball top and unscrew it and you can tighten it extremely tight. You pretty much have to do it that way. Here, you could use a wrench, but also you wouldn't really use this here because you wouldn't really like uh, try to loosen and uh, take the ball top off that way, but you could, you could use a screwdriver, um, Phillips, and you wanna get sure you get the right type. So whenever you use, especially with a Phillips screwdriver, put the screw head in there and um, put the driver in there and just make sure there's no wiggle. Make sure it's very firm and that when you move it, you're moving the bolt, but you're not wiggling the screwdriver in the bolt. In the um, So, because if you do that, you could, you could strip them. Um, it doesn't happen too often in this hobby, but it's possible. It usually happens in the, in the mounting plate bolts though, especially on the Sanwa JLF. If you, you need to use a Japanese uh, screwdriver, um, particular type, the right size. Uh, if you use more of a Western screwdriver, you could you could strip uh, the bolts from the screws from uh, hard drive enclosures, especially in the PlayStation, and um, and also mounting plates. So, yeah. Um, again, just wanted to clarify, show that because I figured some people would want to see how the V3 looked. Thank you again all for your support. You guys have a good one. Take care and enjoy.